I don't think anyone can deny the fact that we've given Intel a lot of flack over the years for rehashing what is essentially the same CPU architecture. 14 nanometer, this many pluses. And if we're being honest, AMD's kinda more or less done the same thing with the release of its XT processor lineup. Not that this necessarily bad if it's just a one-off thing. If you're doing it uh, one time, it's kind of a architecture rehash, so to speak, in between big leaps in terms of performance. I don't mind that. It's when you do it five or six times that it gets pretty old. But anyway, that release, the 3600, 800, and 900 XTs. On the surface, they appear nearly identical to original Zen 2 SKUs, and that's because they are nearly identical. But there's a bit more to the story than meets the eye. I want to discuss that and discuss the viability of those CPUs overall. Stay with me. The stylish Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3 offers exceptional cooling while maintaining a silent profile thanks to a PWM Shadow Wings 2 fan. And with a 190 watt TDP, expect plenty of overclocking headroom. Click the link below to learn more. First, let's talk about what these chips aren't. These are not direct upgrades for existing Zen 2 SKUs, namely the popular 3600, which is not the box I'm holding, not sure why I did that. Instead, the XT lineup is meant to complement what is already, I need, I really, I need to oil this chair. Meant to complement what already exists and provide a bit more of variety for consumers switching to Ryzen for the first time. And I'm okay with that, right? To be completely honest, I'm more looking forward to what happens with original Zen 2 prices. If this launch lowers 3600 prices by even a few bucks, I'd say mission accomplished. And that's probably not what AMD was expecting with this launch. It was already the best value chip on the market and AMD's potentially sweetening the deal a bit, which I am not gonna complain about. But if you're at all confused about which to buy, if you're converting platforms outright, here is the short and sweet answer. The XT processors aren't worth it in my book. And I know that's probably a hot take you weren't expecting, seeing as though Team Red's been on a roll these past few years. And just a, a quick you know, disclaimer, I have not seen a single TechTubers review of XT chips, so I have no idea what anyone else is saying about this. This is just my impression of the chips based on the tests that I've run. I ran a few tests, uh, I would say more than a few, which is why this video didn't release or, or publish uh, the same day that the NDA lifted. I'm not a fan of NDAs to begin with, but also uh, this is a lot of stuff to take in. I decided to compare, for the most part, just the XT SKUs to the non-XT SKUs, since we know how the non-XT ones already fare against Intel offerings. Uh, but I did throw a few Intel chips in, especially uh, when we were talking about the 3900 XT, because the 10900K was released, and then the 3900 XT, and so I don't have raw data for those two, so you'll see that later. Anyway, the 3600 XT, which seemed the most appealing on paper, squeaks out a tiny win in synthetics and rendering, but gains almost nothing extra in most of the games I tested, which I'm sure is no surprising, as though the only real benefit here is a slightly longer sustained boost and a slightly higher boost overall. Architecturally, the 3600 XT, right, still sits on that seven nanometer process. It still boasts six cores and 12 threads. Again, it can boost a bit higher and it can boost a bit longer, and it consumes a tad bit more power, but that's really where the story ends. Until you look at the price. The XT variant begs for an extra 50 bucks, and uh, I'm not seeing that being made up anywhere in these charts. I mean, sure, the story would be different if the 3600 no longer existed on the new market, but the fact of the matter is that it does, and AMD themselves intend for it to stay for quite some time on the new market. They've even said this themselves. And to reiterate what I mentioned earlier, I have no doubt the 3600 will continue to fall in price. Not that the XT variant won't, but the 3600 more so. And I've seen it listed for as low as 160 already on Newegg and Amazon, that's 160 USD. And I highly doubt we'll see anything like that from a brand new XT chip anytime soon. Now, as for the 3800 and 900 XTs, things spread out a bit more, but this kind of makes sense as performance scales with core count. The 3900 XT in particular caught my eye as a potential winner from a sheer power standpoint alone, seeing as though it beat out my 10900K stock for stock in a single core Cinebench run, though it is worth noting that this is the only place where the 10900K lost. In gaming, the 10900K is still king, but when value is called into question, the 3900 XT takes the cake by a long shot. It also manages to consume significantly less power while doing so thanks to the more efficient process. Intel can't even keep stock of higher tier chips. The 10900 and 10900K are out of stock right now on Amazon being sold by third parties for like eight or 900 bucks. What the heck is that, right? So I feel like this section of the video could more or less be rendered pointless 
at this moment, although I expect the stock will eventually creep its way back. The only reason, in fact, that I would choose the 10900K or 10700K at MSRP over an equivalent AMD offering is in the case of Premiere Pro, where an IGP certainly comes in handy, which most Ryzen SKUs do not have. It's why I still use one in my personal editing rig. Am I pointing toward it? Yep, that, that thing there. But this is a very special use case, I get that, right? AMD still light years ahead though in the value department and the XT release only compounds Team Blue's issues. So while I don't necessarily recommend XT variants from AMD, I am still wholeheartedly behind Ryzen for around 90 to 95% of users, again, with the exception of specific cases in which Intel's IGP deals that fatal blow. Very, very small use case there. From an optimization standpoint though, the tides have really turned. I mean, the argument for an Intel chip over AMD from a purely optimization standpoint is just out the window. And most of the things that I've seen, most of the stuff that I do day to day, I don't see that Intel bias that I might've seen five or six years ago because five or six years ago, Intel was the only viable chip maker out there. Six multi-threaded cores, that'll go a long way in 2020. That is the sweet spot I would say. 12 threads is just, it, that's it's crazy to get 12 threads for around 120 bucks in the, in the 2600 and even brand new, 200 bucks a 3600, a 3600 XT for 250. I mean, it's still not terrible, uh, but AMD's already done so well with the 3600 that I have to recommend that one over the newer one. And the 2600 is great, by the way, if you're looking for something on a tighter budget. So look, if it tells you anything about how AMD sees this recent CPU launch, specifically the 3600 XT, We've got an entire build video coming out. They send a bunch of stuff for that build video a week ago, and they included a regular 3600, not the newer XT variant. And I think that speaks for itself loud and clear. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and I will catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.